if there's something that needs to be cut away from, a routine, an emotional rut, a pattern, a version of your life in retrospect that encumbers growth. Today is a good day to sever those ties under this partial lunar eclipse. Be alert to indulging in bitter aspersions. Better to water and nurture seeds for positive growth. It is a day fraught with divergence dynamics. See and feel yourself flying free rather than seeing yourself as crashing into the old. Memories, mothers, turning points in life, all are highly illuminated now. Interesting. Hi, future editing Jen here. I wanted to come back and read the exact Sabian symbol for Pisces 26 degrees, a new moon that divides its influences. And I did jot down some notes right inside the book here. Neptune was at this degree point, 26 degrees Pisces, in February and March, early March of 2024, April to early May 2023, and 25 degrees... Neptune was exactly 25 degrees Pisces, where this partial, this full moon partial lunar eclipse is happening. That full moon was on December 26th, so Boxing Day 2023. Yeah, I think I remember that. Full moon, 4 degrees, Cancer, but Neptune was at the degree point where this partial lunar eclipse is happening and we're having a lot of attention on the final degrees of Pisces in the next coming months as Saturn closes in on Neptune in the late degrees of Pisces, early degrees of Aries, and the two planets essentially together shift out of the late degrees of Pisces and into Aries in 2025 and 2026. So this is going to be really important, really strong energy. Pisces, 26 degrees, a new moon that divides its influences. Keyword, finesse. Theme, stirring from within. This symbol speaks to initiative, or the stirring from within that leads to outreach and new beginnings. The image of a new moon that divides its influences refers to the different impact that the same event can have on various individuals. So, two people in a relationship third party objective. One opinion, another opinion, two different perspectives could be completely different experiences. If we were to interview that toxic ex of mine, I'm sure his perspective would vary and we would see a different, not necessarily wrong, but a different layer, which is why it's so important to try to detach and look at that third party objective perspective. So its influence refers to the different impact the same event can have on various individuals, depending on the reality that each is a part of, so the timeline that you're on. The earliest description of this image contrasted the romantic significance of the new moon for lovers with the intimation of eternity that the philosopher perceives. The emphasis in this degree is on experimentalism, and on man's or woman's instinctive need to move outside themselves and become an active participant in life, even if they are uncertain about how to do this. But the greater suggestion here is that an individual should avoid making permanent commitments until they clearly know what they want and need. So I think this is like, if I could highlight and underline that, this is like what the problem with dating before you're like fully evolved and mature is. An individual should avoid making permanent commitments until they clearly know what they want and need. When you're unsure and you navigate into a commitment or into a relationship, it can really muddy the waters and create some trouble. 
positive at its highest, this symbol represents the ability to take full advantage of the opportunities that arise in any changing situation. So we may have big changes coming up. And capitalize on every newly discovered aptitude and talent within the self. Negative, indecision, ambivalence, and self-defeated fence straddling. So riding what I call the seesaw of indecision. And I know it all too well as a Libran. The accent is on uncertainty. You may be unsure about how to begin some new project or wavering back and forth on a, on a decision that you have to make. Opportunity. Your greatest advantage lies in choosing one of your options and going with it on a trial basis. Okay. Whether it's right or wrong, choose something. Guard against, mm, yeah, guard against riding that seesaw of indecision until it's too late. And that has happened to me before because when you fail to make a choice, you're making a choice and the universe can and will take that opportunity. They'll see that you're not ready and present it to someone else who is ready to be decisive and act on what they want. Uncertainty, tentativeness, irresolution, qualm, apprehension, insecurity, reluctance, ambiguity, ambivalence, doubt, hesitation, questioning, reservation, fight in the wind here, indecision, misgivings, and mistrust. So I also want to mention that the next degree point, 27 degrees Pisces, is a harvest moon. And this full moon. I didn't mention it earlier in the video and I'm honestly kind of surprised I didn't. I usually do. Is the corn moon or the harvest moon, which is the name for the full moon, at least in the northern hemisphere. My apologies to those of you. I know we do have some tuning in from Australia and the southern hemisphere. Maybe if you'd like, share with us in the comments what your unique names in the southern hemisphere, if they differ, because I am really curious. It does seem to be very like heavily influenced by Northern Hemisphere and Native American tribes, a lot of these names. But the corn moon, you read from Living Lunarly, moon-based self-care for your mind, body, and soul. I found this at Whole Foods. Not found, but purchased when I was working there back when I was in corporate America and had a side hustle at Whole Foods. Corn moon. This September moon honors the harvesting of maize, a staple crop in Native American diets. This is a time to recognize the staples in your life. So those five pillars of self-care. Again, they are physical, mental, spiritual, interpersonal or social. Honestly, I could probably list seven because I would also say financial would be its own pillar. And then mental, I mean, there's like logical and then there's also creative. So I think dipping into both buckets there too. It's almost like the nine theories of intelligence, the nine different types of intelligences, hitting each one of those in a balanced way for your own personality. So for example, I work in a very extroverted role where I am using my personal training certification and now I have like a mobility certification to go on top of that. And I work with clients on a one-to-one -one basis on their flexibility and mobility goals. So we're talking pretty much the whole, it's 30 minute or hour sessions. I'm talking, getting to know them all day long. So someone like me, who's a Libra and really doesn't get a lot of alone time, I'm either always with my significant other or a parent or another close friend or business partner or boss, very rarely get time alone. And as a North Node Aquarius, with a lot of placements in the 12th house, I very much do recharge with alone time and rest, intro more introverted activities. So it's really about knowing yourself and then looking at your life, seeing what like your job maybe checks a big extroverted bucket for you and you need to spend more of your downtime doing introverted things like 
I do. Researching astrology, creating these videos, working on music, hanging out with my dogs, getting stuff done around the house. That's what I spend the majority of my free time doing. This is the time to recognize the staples in your life and give gratitude for what is truly important and necessary to your existence. So we've got Uranus in the late degrees of Taurus on Algol, shifting, collectively shifting values. People that you thought incapable of changing may actually be changing as their values shift on a subtle level. Pluto, 29 degrees Capricorn, is also influencing this, helping us refocus on what's most important, shifting away from instant gratification, materialism, overconsumption, and focusing on the staples. This is Virgo season is all about say the easiest way to spot a Virgo is their humility. There's a lot of, especially if you meet like an attractive Virgo and they don't even know they're attractive, there's something just so much more attractive about somebody who doesn't realize the power of their attraction. Then there's a grand cardinal cross involving the opposition between Mars in Cancer and Ceres in Capricorn. So Mars in Cancer is answering to the moon, and it's also influencing the north node of Aries for the rest of the year. Mars will experience an extended stay in Cancer. It usually only spends six to eight weeks, two months or so in each sign, but every two years Mars retrogrades, spending 60 to 80 days due to its upcoming retrograde. Mars opposite Ceres 